the future of DeFi Kingdoms. Hey everybody and welcome to another DeFi Kingdoms video. Wednesday the team released their new roadmap and it made me think about the future of DeFi Kingdoms. So let's take some time to discuss the current state of the project and what the future holds for DFK. Current state of the project. As many of you know, we've been pretty much stuck with only having some clickable quests since early December last year when fishing and foraging quests came out, followed by mining and gardening quests. And to be honest, after 6 months of doing these, with an increasing hero base, I'm getting a bit tired of doing the same thing 2-3 to three times a day. It doesn't help that the items we gather with the fishing and foraging quests pretty much don't have a use case. Yes, you may get an egg from time to time. But personally I've been extremely unlucky getting only two of them after thousands of quests. And even then, they have only been sitting in your inventory. Looking at the roadmap, the team later on delivered the Alchemist and as shown in previous videos, and after again checking the prices today, it's definitely not worth your time. If anything, you're basically throwing away money creating potions when they are cheaper to buy on the market. And I mean a lot cheaper, so no gameplay there. And after that we see that we got Crystalville, Training Quests and the Stone Carver recently got added. And that's where I think everything took a wrong turn for the project. Yes, I acknowledge that the mining issue and the incredible FOD storm that came with us was very detrimental for DFK as a whole, but by trying to create Crystalville on another chain, they completely neglected the core of a GameFi project, which is gameplay. If people are not engaged with what they are doing and have to do the same clicks every day, which is somewhat cumbersome, for rewards that are almost negligible, then you will lose interest from players, lose them altogether and as a result lose value in the project. I understand that it was a solid technical milestone to have created Crystalville, but it demolished what DeFi Kingdoms initially tried to accomplish. An actual game with gameplay backed by DeFi incentives. Let's take a look at the initial roadmap. Now, as with almost all gaming projects, deadlines on roadmaps can change, but by now we should have been in the final phase, where we would get a battle system, PvE and PvP, the actual core gameplay. Not to mention the release of kingdoms, buildings and equipment. December 6th, right after when they released the first quest, they released the information about Crystalville, December 6th also being pretty much the top for the general crypto market, but that's a side note. The team was feeling on top of the world and simply took on too many things at once, instead of focusing on their core unique selling point. The roadmap changed, getting convoluted with two projects at once, without clear deadlines and as is understandable, it isn't a simple one-on-one -on -one copy pasta to the next chain. It takes manpower to create everything that is needed from scratch again. This resulted in us now having two different worlds on two blockchains, but lacking again the core USP any gameplay to speak of. Where artists and devs could have spent all their time on creating the initial milestones, albeit with pets included maybe, they had to divide up their time, which if we simply make a 50-50 split in manpower, means that everything moves twice as slow, if not slower since people have to learn how things work in other areas as well. As somewhat of an emergency, we need something new for the players, we receive training quests, which are absolutely skewed to only being interesting if your heroes are higher level, and even then, it doesn't really add anything new. If anything, it takes way more time to find the right quest givers, find the right heroes to do the quests, and then complete them. It's the same three clicks, but now you have to divide it over eight quest givers instead of four, not mentioning the time it takes to load the different areas. That's not an improvement at all. The other thing we received was the stone carver, something I speculated on being the beginning of either equipment or buildings. But again, it was something to add just for adding sake, trying to get some use cases to all the almost worthless items you receive from questing. It's not added gameplay, and the guy isn't there most of the time at all anyway. The team has to stop creating all these side quests and start focusing on gameplay and fast. We are at about 30% of the users we were at when there was a lot of hype surrounding DFK, but interest is waning with every single day. In the last week we lost another 10% of users. And looking at new accounts created, we see the lowest stats I've seen ever with sometimes no more than 25 new profiles created. 
which don't mean they invested in the game or bought a hero, so active new players is even lower. In my opinion, this again is due to the team being all over the place focusing on 50 things, instead of working on the original roadmap which got us at the PvP stage now. Is this a rant? Well, to be honest, when they showed the new roadmap Wednesday, I was very much let down. Putting all the major gameplay parts of the game in the mist, saying maybe it will be earlier, maybe later, is truly disappointing. DFK duels might be something that can be interesting, but with the previous add-ons to the game, think training quests and the stone carver, as being two of the main deliverables in the entire quarter, I'm skeptic until we actually see some gameplay. If it's another press hero, click battle, wait 10 minutes, get results, that is in no way a different or enticing gameplay element. And in the meantime we see DFK Arena already bringing more gameplay than the 50 man strong DeFi Kingdoms team has delivered. It doesn't help that we only got a tweet with some information about the dual system and nothing else. I'm really hoping for a big surprise where we can enjoy doing something with the heroes, but honestly it feels like another update to just at least fill something in before we get actual gameplay. The pets will probably be a nice touch, but in the end it will be the same as a hero. You can attach them to your NFTs and that's that. No gameplay. And when you check the next quarter, we get level 10 quests, which will probably be the same as the current quests, but the rewards will be better and they will only be available to higher profession heroes. If this is the case, then it only means that you will have to click more to find the right heroes at the right quests, instead of choosing all your fishers for the fishing quests. Besides that, we get land tournaments, not too much information available yet, and travel. Travel to do what exactly? All of these things were not in the initial roadmap, we see those in the mist, hoping for perhaps a surprise Q3 release, but more likely in Q4 or Q1 of 2023. If that's the case, then the same we've seen for the last couple of months will happen. More and more people will lose interest, dragging the whole project down. And what happened to Christopher at all? There is nothing in the roadmap for that part of the game. Not that I mind, like stated earlier, I want them to focus on one chain and make the game, but that does make it seem that the team also acknowledges that Crystal Veil was a bad decision. So what now? Personally, I'm torn between just leaving this all together and come back somewhere in Q4, or keep questing and clicking and leveling up my heroes to have an advantage in 6 to 9 months. The former pretty much makes my losses realized and it means I give up on the project until I see that they have some clarity on where to go. The second gives me the risk that the project simply bleeds out more, which, although answered often by the team, also means there is a non-zero chance of the team going belly up. Salaries have already been lowered and it's a difficult decision for the team now to start selling jewel for stables with the price of being at almost inception. If you want to answer this question for yourself, you have to make the decision. Stick with it for another 6 months at least until we see gameplay. If you don't mind the clicking quests and enjoy finding items and leveling up and have a long breath, then that's maybe the right decision for you. If you don't, don't expect this to change anytime soon. Other aspects that have to be taken into consideration is that the rewards will be lower and lower, and in a couple of months Lockjewel will be released as well, albeit gradually. But if we don't see an increasing player base, or worse a decreasing one, then who's going to keep up with the extra tokens? Financially, it's hard to see a catalyst for prices to start turning green again. And to answer that question, how will we find new players at all? Yes, we are in a rough spot overall in the market, but will they all flock back to DFK in a couple of weeks or months when and if we turn around? Or will the old players see that it's still the same and look somewhere else? Without the high APRs, we're also not the first choice for people looking for the DeFi part. Personally, I already de-risked a lot more in the farms, but kept my heroes. And the roadmap they showed us only shows me more that I made the right decision. I still farm some, I still have heroes questing, I'm willing to give the team some trust to show me that DFK Jewel and pets are actually interesting add-ons, but if the team keeps postponing while delivering unasked non-crucial components instead of what they in my opinion should be working on, then it's fair to say that this project needs way more time to become what it wants to be, and may mean that until it does, I'm looking for other promising projects to put my time and effort in. I'll continue to follow the development of DFK and make videos on the projects until my patience with them is over. I still want to believe, but this roadmap was another nail in the coffin. Anyhow, I hope after all that you still enjoyed the content. If you did, be sure to subscribe for more GameFi and DFK content in the future. 
And as always, I'd really appreciate the like so other people can more easily find the videos. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and have a great day.